Now, if you needed a new doctor, lawyer or accountant, you'd shop around, right? Well, just as you should when you need an insurance broker. Insurance is our topic in Perpetual Guardian Money Matters. Today with us is our regular finance guru, Charlotte Lockhart, and she is joined by David Yates from the Financial Advisors Association. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. To you both. Charlotte, let's start with you. Uh, is there a reason why you're str such a strong advocate for getting the right insurance? Well, yes, um, quite a few years ago I was actually diagnosed with breast cancer and uh, I was very lucky to have had an excellent insurance broker at the time and he had stitched me up, as I thought at the time, with all the right insurances and so I was able to really know what that meant. So, uh, yeah, we're all out there. You never know that something bad's going to happen even to when you're quite young. Well, I think that's been proven recently, hasn't it? You never yes. know what's around the corner. So, David, are there different types of insurance brokers or advisors? There are, yeah, and the market's relatively complicated. Okay, um, so you're going to make it easy for me, I'm aren't gonna you? I'm going to try, yeah. Good. So, so there are, broadly speaking, there are two types of insurance advisor. There was what we would describe as an aligned advisor. And so that's an advisor who typically works for a bank or an insurance company. And they, their role in life is to sell the, the products of those particular right. companies. Right, okay. Uh, and then there's what we would describe as the non-aligned. Uh, and most of our members are non-aligned advisors. And these are people who provide insurance advice around a range of products. So how do you find a good one? How do you, I mean, what do you look for? Again, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no clearly defined answer, but, but there are some category or characteristics of particular advi advisors that you can look for when you're looking for, uh, for an insurance broker. So, for example, belonging to a professional body, okay. uh, like NZFAA or PAA or IFA, there's three primary bodies. Uh, somebody who has professional qualification, so it's looking for somebody who has a specific qualification or a professional designation in this area. Okay. Um, you can also look for uh, look look at the, the, when you do an online search search for that. Look at their website um, and uh, look for testimonials. So other clients have given recommendations to the to their brokers. So those are things that we should be looking for. What should we be asking the advisor when we meet them for the first time, just to scope them out? So a, a good insurance advisor will not just be talking about product. A good insurance advisor will have a whole range of services wrapped around that product. So. An insurance advisor will be able to help you with how to, uh, how to manage your ownership of your insurance policy, structure your policies to make it best for your particular circumstances. Mm -hmm. And how are they paid? Broadly, most, most insurance advisors are paid by commission. So again, like Royden earlier on, uh, you, don't need to, uh, you don't need to necessarily pay the insurance advisor unless you want to. There are some benefits in doing that. So if you, do, if you are looking for an insurance advisor, it's worth asking whether they offer a fee option because there can be some significant discounts in insurance premiums for taking a fee option. Okay, so there's a few things to think about. Charlotte, what happens to your life insurance when you die? Uh, do you, does your family get it immediately or is it tied up in the estate? Well, it depends, as David said, on, on the ownership structure. So David, if David and I were married, um, he would set the insurance up so that I own the policy. So if he passes away, the policy belongs to me and it's just affected by his death. So it doesn't get included in the, st the estate. Often work place uh, life insurances and things like that are owned by the person who's passed away so then it does get caught up in your estate Goodness. so having a will at that stage of course is a good idea. There are a few things to think about, it is not quite as straightforward as what I thought, thank you both very much David and Charlotte, that has been really good advice today, uh, great financial advice in fact.